Welcome to The Nail, I'm Ashley. I'm Mika. With the super powered Xbox One X releasing tomorrow. That's Tuesday, if you're not watching this right when it releases. <laughs> we have so many questions. Is Microsoft done with console generations? Uh, will it come out with a brand spanking new console whenever the next gen rolls around? Uh, will the Xbox One be getting more exclusives? Or is Microsoft transitioning into a third party developer that's gonna release games on any platform, including the PlayStation? That's, that's a lot of questions. Well, depending on which Microsoft executive you talk to, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Isn't that helpful? It's very helpful. In various interviews, Microsoft officials have said absolutely a full-fledged next-gen system could definitely happen, even though in the past they've said that the idea of generations could be coming to an end, so uh, helpful. And Microsoft is investing in studios to make more first-party games mm -hmm. to refill its pipeline of exclusives, so mm -hmm. a lot of people who've been complaining about this year's lineup should be pretty happy about that. But then again, it could start making all of its games multi-platform too. So, I mean, you know, if you're not counting the fact that they're all on Xbox and PC is multi-platform. Right. If all this sounds super confusing, well, welcome to the state of gaming and Microsoft for 2017. With the Xbox One X releasing tomorrow, remember that's Tuesday in case you're watching this on another day, it looks like Microsoft is pivoting to its future plans, including a renewed focus on software development. But what those plans exactly are, yeah, I don't shrug. So as you know, the Xbox One X will release Tuesday. Again, that's tomorrow if you missed it, which Microsoft has had as the most powerful console of its generation and the new console could signally change in the pace at which Microsoft releases its consoles. Xbox boss Phil Spencer said earlier this year that the idea of console generations could slow down from the current pace of yeah, five to eight years. The idea is that console makers could start producing more iterative versions like the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro instead of starting from scratch with brand new machines. Which generally then means you have to start out with a whole new library of games and you lose all the ones that you've had. I mean, unless you're going the Microsoft route, which we'll get into. Uh, meanwhile, in a recent interview with Bloomberg, Spencer said that Microsoft will probably debut a streaming service that doesn't require a console at all for some types of content sometime in the next three years. So imagine it like Microsoft's answer to PlayStation now. So it seems like could Microsoft eventually be done with consoles entirely in the future? I guess, yeah, you can draw that a conclusion, but I doubt it. Yeah. Before you read too much into that, another, another Microsoft official said in a separate interview that sure, they would be open to the idea of a next-gen Xbox console. So there's that whenever that time rolls around. Now that comes from Albert Pinello, senior director of Xbox marketing, who told IGN that Microsoft doesn't think console gener generations are coming to an end. He said, I think there will always be step changes in technology. I don't think we've ever said that console generations would go away. He kind of did. He kind of did. But I do think that it changes the nature of how you think about compatibility, which has always been an afterthought for the most part on consoles. And Phil said this a lot. We're making a huge effort for backwards compatibility. And they really are. Yeah. I mean, to give credit to Microsoft and Xbox, we've had Xbox 360 backwards compatibility and they keep adding more and more games to that. They just launched original Xbox backwards compatibility, which is awesome. If if you like some of those games and have been missing them but don't have the hardware anymore. So they are making a lot of steps to make sure that your library doesn't end when you get a new generation. So maybe console generations aren't dead, dead, but in Microsoft's eyes, whatever the next Xbox console is, it's gonna need to be backwards compatible, which again, pretty in line with what Microsoft's been saying. It wants to hang on to its player base and not lose them with a brand new console that won't play old Xbox games. Pinello added, I am not sure what the next thing will look like, but I would certainly say we are doubling down on our commitment to compatibility. We will try to keep it compatible with our existing library of games. That is super important to us. All right, so we got the old games, but what about the exclusives? Well, that's been a much talked about Achilles heel for the Xbox One this generation. Well, and this year in particular. Yeah, if you're keeping track of this year, Microsoft's exclusives in 2017 have included uh, Forza Motorsport 7, Halo Wars 2, and Cuphead. Cuphead, cupcake. Cupcake. It's DLC. Yeah. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the PC Smash Hit Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is going to be releasing on Xbox One December 12th. Mm -hmm. um, so that's being ballyhooed as a console launch exclusive, and it'll probably move some hardware. It's definitely going to move a lot of software sales, but PS4 players will probably get that at some point later on, going by some comments the developers have made recently. And that's compared to Sony, which just secured console exclusives like, are you ready for all these fingers compared to those three fingers? We got Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona 5, Uncharted Lost Legacy, Nier Automata, Neo, Crash Bandicoot, and Kingdom Hearts 2.8 forever billion. billion. What <laughs> remains of Edith Finch, Pyre, Hellblade, Everybody's Golf, and to top it all off, it's crowning jewel. Nac 2. Nac 2. Right there. That's right. Yeah. 
Now, just to name a few, that's just a couple. That's yeah. not actually the full exclusive list. Uh, a lot of those are third party, but, and a lot of them also came to PC, but when we're talking about just what's exclusive on console, that's a pretty long list. Uh, of course, Nintendo uh, has two Game of the Year contenders already with Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey, not to mention Splatoon 2, which is amazing. Uh, Mario <laughs> plus Rab is Kingdom Battle, also amazing. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which, you know, sure, re-release, but also real great. But don't worry out there, says Microsoft, we've got more. Cause Xbox News that Shannon Loftus told GameSpot that I think our offering is good and that it's solid. I definitely hear that gamers want more. Would we love to have two dozen more super strong, absolutely exclusives? You bet. We do have more coming, more that are in the works that we're not talking about now, but I feel good about what we have to offer for the launch of our Xbox One X. So they've got more games in the works and the Xbox One X offering she's referring to is probably the 130 games that are getting a little spit polish for the Xbox One X. Getting those high res textures in that 4K. Don't forget that HDR and the HDR. Phil Spencer reinforced that in a separate interview, saying that Microsoft will be investing in studios to create more first-party games, including acquiring studios or starting new ones. He told Bloomberg, we need to grow, and I look forward to doing that. Our ability to go create content has to be one of our strengths. We haven't always invested at the same level. We've gone through ups and downs in the investment. All right, so Microsoft's investing more in software development. Mm -hmm. I think everyone will be happy about that. But will those be exclusives or could they maybe potentially eventually be available elsewhere too? Because possibly. In yet another interview with the Wall Street Journal, Spencer said that one day in the future, more Microsoft first party games could actually show up on other platforms. He said like iPhones or big gasp everyone. PlayStation 4. And another games writer, Royce Wilson, tweeted that regarding exclusives, Spencer told him that they didn't want non-platform owners to miss out, which if that's true, would be a pretty interesting take for a console developer to have. Hey, we want everyone to be able to play everything. Exclusives don't matter anymore. I feel like everybody just needs to sit down <laughs> and talk about what they're trying to say because it is confusing. It is, although what he's saying does actually echo a segment of the console gaming population, at least who have increasingly been holding the philosophy that exclusives hurt games gamers by forcing them to either buy multiple consoles or miss out on some games. Also in that Wall Street Journal interview, Spencer said that while console sales are important, Microsoft is more focused on growing game software and services. He said the company measures the success of its gaming business by talking about the number of people who use Xbox Live, which is quite a bit different than console sales. Yeah, well, it is true though that one of the things in the console business that brings in the least amount of positive revenue is actually the hardware itself. And unless you're Nintendo who <laughs> prided themselves on selling hardware for a profit in the past, I don't think they're doing that with the Switch, but they definitely did it with the Wii. Console are usually sold for a loss, at least early in the life cycle, with the focus being on software sales and, you know, these days online services to then make up the difference and turn a profit. So at the end of the day, across all of these various interviews, <laughs> it looks like Microsoft is still supportive of its console business, but how long that will last is anyone's guess. Its executives also seem to be suggesting that Microsoft's ultimate future could be in software and growing the Xbox platform rather than judging success purely on hardware sales and the Xbox itself as a rectangular thing. <laughs> right, so they're not gonna stop selling hardware anytime soon, I'm sure, and the Xbox One, Sure, it's not doing PS4 numbers, but it's selling at the rate that the Xbox 360 did, which last generation was really very impressive. So uh, that's all going fine. We'll get more Xboxes. We'll get the Xbox Triple X any day now. Um, and they're really happy if people are playing the content on an Xbox, that's great. But they've definitely left the door open to potentially a more third party future. What do you guys think of this latest round of comments from Microsoft executives? Could they be moving to a more third party future? Are you confused at what they're saying? Let us know in the comments. And for all your Xbox and Microsoft news, make sure you like this video. If you're new around here, subscribe to the now. Now, like, as you know, the Xbox One X is gonna release Tuesday. That's tomorrow, <laughs> in case you missed it. Uh, which <laughs> Microsoft has touted as the most powerful consoleration. I don't even know what that is. Um, whatever the next Xbox console is, it's gonna need to be backwards compatible. 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 Uh